And then we have this headline is what I'm going to call it that came out like a month ago that said, if you intermittent fast, 91% increase in cardiovascular event. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because we are we were flooded yeah. with questions on that. And, I, and when I looked at it, I thought this is an exact opposition of the research I've mm-hmm. seen you produce. So it didn't really make sense to me. Can you address that so people understand what that headline was? And was it accurate? And how does it tie into the research you've done? Yeah, so the, let's try to explain what is that research. So what happens in the, in the U.S. almost every couple of years, there is this survey uh, that goes out to thousands of people. They're randomly picked mm. in a way that they represent all ethnicity, all age range, et cetera. And one of the questions there is, what did you eat yesterday? And how, how mm. much you ate? Not typically when you eat it because, you know, the questionnaire is not actually optimized to accurately say when this person ate. But anyway, so they Mm -hmm. collect this information. And then they also collect other information, whether the person is smoker, non-smoker, all the other information, which is called enhanced. That's the short form. It's done in every two years. And that helps people to kind of look at the broad picture of what is going on with respect to health, what percentage of these people who are interviewed were obese, what percentage were healthy, Mm. what problems they have, and all that stuff. That gives us a very good idea of what is the state of the health in the country. Mm. But it doesn't give us a good picture of what people ate because more than 60% of people in those surveys, they under-report what they eat. They because it's very difficult. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you ask me what I ate yesterday and all the person size, it becomes very difficult to describe. On top of that, when I ate, Bre- people yes. say, yeah, I ate breakfast at 8 o'clock. Or maybe they forgot. And then people are not objectively asked, when was your first calorie? When was your breakfast? So the survey is, there are a lot of studies saying that the survey is not the best way to collect nutrition information. And in fact, there was a Mayo Clinic article saying how more than 50% of people report metabolically implausible amount of food they eat. For example, a 100 kilo person would report that he or she ate only 400 mm. kilocalories. That's impossible. So, mm. so there is a lot of problem with that data. So that's why that nutrition data has never been used to set policies about what, when, and how much people should eat, to be very clear. That nutrition data mm-hmm. is rarely used to do set any policy. Second, that nutrition data is also never used to say that whether you should eat this way to reduce the risk for other disease. So, so essentially, this is a garbage in, garbage out kind of analysis because the nutrition data collected is a very poor quality. So now, in this study... Yeah. What they reported was they asked people who were eating less than eight hours. This is very important that they asked, did they eat whatever they reported? Was it less than eight hours? They didn't actually say whether they were eating only one meal. Some people say that we ate only one meal. Because maybe that day they ate one meal. Or whether they or how much they ate. There was no explicit in that abstract, there is nothing saying that how much they ate. What they ate is just one thing that they ate with, within less than eight hours. And then they try to match mm. what kind of people are dying every year. Then they try to match them to the survey, which is very in, indirect way of connecting who, is, who are the people who yeah. are dying in the next five or six years. And then this is called the National Death Index. And then connecting with it's not that those specific people. Who are dying because those specific people are not longitudinally surveyed. So it was a little bit right. difficult to make this connection. You have to do some statistical <laughs> with plus to make that connection. And another yes. thing was this was not meant for public consumption. This abstract, when we go to scientific meetings, we usually put a small study and then see what people think. People give us feedback. And then we come back to our lab and think, oh, maybe this is not a good idea. Maybe I have to do more. 
So that's the purpose of scientific conferences where we s submit a very mm. small article, less than 500 words, saying this is what we, f and then sometimes we do put a poster. So that means it's like two or three figures. Think of your high school science fair project, how people put a poster is almost like that to get some feedback. And unfortunately, American Heart Association decided to put it for public consumption instead of scientific discussion, in addition to scientific discussion. And then when it came out, although it's not peer reviewed by other scientists to the same rigor as any journal article is peer reviewed, um, there is no scientific discussion going on and when it went out, people got really <laughs> scared, people freaked out. out. Yes, we got calls yeah. from our patients saying yeah. that, hey, I want to withdraw from this study because I might die. And we got, <laughs> oh you know, the regulators, they would actually say, well, now in light of this study, this finding, do you think that you should continue this study? And, and Wow. You know, we, there are many scientists who got these kind of questions from their patients. Uh, there are many physicians who got a lot of questions from their patients. So that's why we had to come together and put a statement. And that statement is now circulating in social media. We put it back to American Heart mm. Association and then we decided that we'll put this statement out there. Because they... Right. Because um, if you go back and ask the same thing, since a lot of people are under-reporting their calorie, including the obese people, they actually underreport their calorie. So does it mean if you yes. take it along that line that that would sound like if you eat less, you may likely become obese, <laughs> which right. is also not yeah, true. It's not, it's not caused. Yeah. Ca yes. So that's why, yes. uh, yeah. and then if you look at what, how many people, the headline is 20,000 people study says this or something like that. Right. Yep. I looked but at less this than, size, the less than less than five hundred people actually reported that they were eating within eight hours or less than eight hours. And if you look at them, they're disproportionately more likely to be smokers. And we know that smoking has a huge impact on mm. heart disease and then there are many other compounds. And as I said, they never reported how many calories were they eating. And why were they eating for less than right. eight hours? No one it means the study actually collected data from many years ago. At that time, intermittent fasting or fasting was not a thing. So the question is, why were they eating for less? Wow. So that also brings up another issue that we have seen with respect to sleep. People say that one should sleep between six and a half to seven and a half hours. The reason is there are many studies all over the world on millions of people now, if we combine all the numbers, showing that those people who habitually eat between six and a half to seven and a half hours have significantly reduced risk for many metabolic disease and morbidities. Mm. So then the question is, well, people who sleep less, of course, we always advise them to sleep a little bit more. Those who sleep four hours or five hours, mm. we tell them sleep more. But then the question is who are habitually sleeping for eight hours, nine hours, because they feel like they have to rest that long. Professional athletes, mm -hmm. for example, they need more than eight hours of sleep. So are we going to tell them, hey, your chance of dying is much higher because you're sleeping more? No, because the lifestyle, the, the body demands that long period of sleeping, so they should sleep longer. We should not ask them to reduce their sleep. Ah, well said. Well said. Yes, that's a great analogy.